Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Palmetto. Today, we're going to take a look at a couple of stories uh, slash articles posted by Dr. Christine Sarteski on X. I believe that she is a psychologist or a psychiatrist, and she studies extremist behavior and sovereign citizen behavior. And these are just two recent instances of sovereign citizenism that I think uh, should fall under our scrutiny, although these aren't, you know, videos like our normal content. But everybody, raise your cup, your glass in the air, drink with me, it tastes better when we sip together. I'm having a little H2O, let's keep it healthy. I saw an article recently that said um, people who drink a lot of a lot of water are happier in general. Anyway, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, if you want to learn more about Sovereign Citizens, I have a great book on them. You can grab the book in the description below. Um, and also check out my other channel on politics, Libertarian Front. Okay, let's start here. <laughs> PA American State National slash Sovereign Citizen case. Pretty standard case, but two noteworthy things. The officer does not arrest the person despite there being outstanding traffic warrants. The consistent thing that we are seeing is that American State Nationals, ASNs, do not want to be called soft sits. And the court is not buying that there is a difference, which 100% I agree with. And for the record, I agree with it too. Sovereign citizens have never really wanted to be called sovereign citizens, although maybe early on in the movement, uh, uh, but at this time, definitely not. Most of them deny it. The only ones that will call themselves sovereign citizens are newbies. The people just don't know any better. They don't understand that that's a huge red flag that's going to get them put in jail and jammed up a hundred different ways. Here's the story from court records. The officer pulls over the soft sit because her license plate read Traveler. <laughs> Additionally, the vehicle's registration read Exempt and Right to Travel. Oh, there you go. A couple more magic words. The officer entered the vehicle's license plate into the PennDOT computer and the response was no record found, indicating that the license plate was not valid. Well, as if you needed more evidence of that. During the traffic stop, she advised the officer that she was traveling rather than driving and therefore, her car did not have to be registered with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. She had removed vehicles inspection stickers. Unfortunately, uh, it does have to be registered under Pennsylvania. It's constitutional and well within the ambit of the state powers. The, office ran the, the officer ran the vehicle's VIN number and learned that the vehicle's registration was expired and that her driver's license was under suspension. Just keep piling it on. The officer then advised plaintiff that he intended to tow her vehicle since it was not lawfully on the roadway and she did not have a valid driver's license. Those are good reasons to tow. At that point, plaintiff refused to leave the ignition key in the vehicle and locked the vehicle's doors, rendering the officer unable to conduct an inventory in of the vehicle. Thereafter, a tow company was summoned to the scene and took possession of the vehicle. Uh, plaintiff refused to leave the key and lock the vehicle's doors. So the officer wasn't able to get the key. I guess she returned home with the key. Hmm. Here's the part that I wondered about. Although plaintiff had outstanding traffic warrants at the time, the officer chose not to take plaintiff into custody. Yeah, I wonder about that too, because that was probably not a smart decision. The soft sit sued and the case was dismissed, but a noteworthy thing in response to defendant's motion, plaintiff contends she is not arguing that she is a sovereign citizen, but rather that she is an American national who is sovereign. A sovereign American national or a non-citizen American national of the United States Corporation, all of which appear to connote by other names and in light of the arguments plaintiff presents, what courts commonly refer to as a sovereign citizen. Listen, sovereign citizens... It's in their blood to play word games. Just because you don't call yourself a sovereign citizen doesn't mean that you aren't one, okay? We have a term that's commonly accepted and any people of logical and rational sense are going to apply that to you, no matter how you want to attempt to rebrand yourself. I am sorry. Uh, the officer should have arrested if he wanted to get the keys. Um, if you take her into custody, you can do an inventory search of the individual 
um, and remove the keys, and then he could have had access to the vehicle. Next article. This sovereign citizen, and look, I mean, that's a really well-written cover to a, 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 a legal document. But let's go to the top. This sovereign citizen tax defier sued the USA and the IRS. It's wild. His main goal was to prevent the IRS from ever contacting him and also to get them to pay him billions of dollars in gold and silver coins. Well, all it takes is a letter to achieve that. Lots of soft-sit ideology woven in. Citing from the case files. Mr. Skirtle has not filed any federal income tax returns for 15 years. Uh-oh! And has not filed any claims for refund. Mr. Skirtle has not paid federal income taxes, nor has the IRS assessed income taxes against Mr. Skirtle since 2009. On August 31st, 2022, Mr. Skirtle filed his complaint in the United States District Court for the District of Montana, seeking an injunction preventing the IRS from ever contacting him again. Criminal charges against any IRS personnel who ever contacted him and $10 billion in tort damages paid in gold and silver coins. Whew. I, why wouldn't everybody, why wouldn't everybody just file this lawsuit? <laughs> in his complaint, Mr. Skirtle did not allege the IRS made incorrect assessments or that he overpaid a federal tax liability. Rather, he alleged widespread fraud and conspiracy but the Uni by the United States for creating the IRS. <laughs> I gotta laugh at that one. And for erroneously treating him as a United States citizen. Whoa, bro. Sorry. He alleged he is not a citizen of the United States, but instead is part of the de jure sovereign people of the United States Five in and four Man Montana. Interesting. According to the complaint, while Mr. Skirtle was serving in the Marine Corps, a JAG officer told him that once a military member is discharged from service, he becomes a non-resident alien and no longer had to pay in federal income taxes. Well, if you lived, um, you know, uh, if you lived in a cave for the last 30 years and and you move there immediately being upon being released from the uh the military then maybe we could believe that you actually believe that um but i doubt that that's the case the complaint further alleged that because mr skirtle was a non-resident alien the laws of the united states and the IR internal revenue code do not apply to him it goes on and in the end it was considered frivolous and denied a motion to amend but you know, he wrote a really good, he wrote a really good, um, he wrote a really good brief here. Well, at least a cover page for a brief. <laughs> so I hope uh, everybody enjoyed this little trip down the lane of sovereign citizen insanity. These are just the latest updates. This movement is growing. It is crazy. Um, and it would be great to put an end to it. Uh, and we can move on. We can move on in this world. We can move on in society. Uh, we can move on in civilization and have enjoyable lives. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Palmetto. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Check out the book that I wrote on sovereign citizens. It's very affordable, and it's available on Amazon. Also, I have another channel called Libertarian Front where I discuss uh, politics, libertarian politics, global politics, etc. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great day.